Retire your way. The phrase sounds great, right? But how do you do it? We find out next. This is Retiring Today. I am here with Haley Gutchenrider and Lauren Merkel. They are both certified financial planners. Lauren is also a retirement income certified professional and a certified financial fiduciary and the author of a new book. Lauren, this is so exciting. I, hot off the presses, you guys. Hot <laughs> off the presses, in my hands. Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way. Lauren, uh, you have to be excited that, that this has all come together. I'm extremely excited that it is has all come together and now it's in its completion. Retiring your way is today. It's not about just retiring. It's about retiring the way that you've always dreamed that you want to retire and really have the lifestyle that you want to have in retirement. And it's not enough just to want to retire your way because now there's all these financial components that have to come together like a puzzle. Pieces of a puzzle come together to make the full retire your way picture. And that's why I'm so excited about the book because one of the hardest parts about retiring is when you get, how do you get started? How do you get, what is a retirement plan? How do you put a retirement plan together? What should be the components involved in a retirement plan? And it's all outlined in a very simple, concise way in the brand new book, Retire Your Way. Yeah, we'll talk a lot about the book throughout the next few episodes of Retiring Today, but uh, Retire Your Way, it's not just a phrase that Lauren talks about. Haley, it's a phrase that everybody at Merkle Retirement Planning is, is very well versed in because we've all seen it live out as we work with these wonderful families and individuals. Yeah, I've seen this live out very recently actually because last year with the interest rate changes, I had a person that I worked with whose pension offering was going to decrease in value. And because of this decrease, he had to make a decision. Am I going to continue to work and take this decreased pension amount? Or should I retire sooner and take the higher lump sum pension offering? And so we get together and we're talking about it. And it turns out that there's so many other factors that go into that decision than just the pension. But for him in particular, he was overworked. He was tired, overwhelmed, getting calls 24 seven. And he was just thinking, well, why not? Why not retire now? And he did. He ended up retiring last year. He took the higher pension offering. He works part-time because it wasn't when he was originally planning on retiring, but he works part-time on a golf course, put a new emphasis on fitness, and is training for his first half marathon. And retiring at that point wasn't ever really a part of his plan, no. but things changed, economic mm -hmm. factors changed. And this is something, this is a common phenomenon that we see with a lot of families we work with. As you get closer to that date that you had planned on retiring, you start to think, well, maybe I should retire a few years earlier and at work seems to be a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. You don't, you seem to not have as much energy or as much willpower to go through the work day on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis. And so you, once you have that retirement plan together that says you in fact can retire now mm -hmm. if you wanted to, then retiring your way sooner becomes a lot easier. And one of the things is that time is a resource that we just can't get back. And so for him in particular, there are so many emotional components that went into this decision. But it's so fun to see him now, this year, because he is just so much more lighthearted. And he's doing the things that he's always wanted to do. He was able to move closer to his family. So it's so fun to see the impacts of that decision that was made last year and see him really retiring his way. Yep. One, of, one of the most rewarding parts of what we do is get to live these retirement transitions with the families and individuals we serve to see them pre-retirement, mm -hmm. help them, guide them through the retirement phase, and then to see them enjoy this time frame that they've thought about, dreamed, dreamt about for a long time. It's really rewarding. And I suspect that this pension conversation is resonating with someone listening right now. So you may be thinking, I'm faced with that kind of a decision. Well, we really go in depth on the analysis that you worked with through this person. Because again, it's one thing to want to retire, but Haley, the retirement planners, they show people how they can. Here's how we're going to get the income. Here's how you're going to you know, fill in the gap. So we go in depth on how Haley worked with uh, the person we were talking about on our podcast, Retiring Today. So if you're facing a pension decision, that might be a great resource for you. Okay, speaking of resources, retire your way. It's right here again hot off the presses the first chapter people might be surprised Lauren that at the very beginning of the the book you're talking about lifestyle you're talking about uh, fun stuff you're not talking about uh, the stock market or 401ks <laughs> or he gets into all surprise. that stuff in the book. so look well, why is that so important yeah I think it is a surprise because when you pick up a retirement book you're probably thinking I'm gonna learn about all the you know the stock choices how to how to create investment portfolio maybe some tax planning which by the way is all in there 
but we start out with the lifestyle because that's the most important part of retiring your way is what is your retirement vision how what what do you want to do to to fulfill your days to refulfill the purpose that you've had is because it's probably going to look a little bit different than what it has over the last 20 to 30 years right what does that look like and once we identify what your retirement lifestyle is going to look like then we can put all the financial pieces of that puzzle together to determine how are you going to pay for that so we start with the lifestyle piece and this is the, and that's why in the very first meetings the visits that we have with with families is we talk about what do you want to do in your retirement right we leave the statements and all the financial stuff for later later part of the conversation what does your retirement vision look like? What do you want to do in retirement? Then we can put everything else together. Well, Lauren, wouldn't you also agree that the families that we work with who have the most successful retirements are the people who did think about that lifestyle component? Because often what happens is that people just, they don't spend that time thinking about what it is that they want to do when they retire. And sometimes that first year of retirement for the people who didn't think about that can be very hard. There is, a, there is a loss of identity when you retire from a career over 30 years. There is a loss of sense of purpose. So the individuals that really start to think about what they want their lifestyle to look like and how they want to go into retirement, those are the ones that have the most fun in retirement. Absolutely. One of the most common pieces of feedback we get from those who have a lifestyle pre-designed prior to retirement is I'm not sure how I found so much time to work because <laughs> yeah. they're very active in retirement and their days just continue to fly by like they did when they were working. And one of the things I like about the book, Lauren, is there's some action steps. There's some stuff that you can do after reading the book to kind of start you on your retirement journey. And one uh, very early on in the book, you say, uh, let's uh, kind of look at your budget, which a lot of people haven't had to look at a budget oh, it's that dirty, in a long time. Dirty, dirty <laughs> yeah, we don't like that word. I, yeah. don't, I don't like budget. <laughs> yeah, because most people, as they're looking to make that transition to retirement, you probably haven't had a real strict budget for a number of years. So now you're saying, really, Lauren, you got, you're telling me I have to have a budget <laughs> as I make this? It's not necessarily a budget like like you probably had when you were 20, 30, maybe 40 years old, but we do need to have a sense of what your lifestyle is going to cost you as you go to and through retirement because you're going to have to deliver income. You're going to have to deliver income not only at point of retirement, but five years into retirement, 20 years in retirement, and account for inflation and taxation at the same time. So it's not necessarily do we need to know where every single penny dollar is going, although some people do. We see a lot of <laughs> spreadsheets. That's, that's a lot of fun. But we need to have a sense of what your lifestyle is going to cost so we know how to pay for it with the resources that you have saved. And you do say in the book, uh, you tell a lot of stories. You don't use clients' names. You don't use a lot of information to identify them. But you do meet with a lot of people that kind of underestimate what they're spending. Yeah, we do use personal anecdotes. And it's all, you know, it's, we, we don't give any real information away. But we tell those stories because I think it can resonate really well with you. Because a lot of people are in your same shoes who have gone through what you're trying to go through right now. And hearing how they went through it some of the things, some of the hurdles that they had to tackle, I think is really powerful to you to empower you to make this next step to retirement. Okay, so you heard Lauren say the word you a lot. That's because your retirement is about you, retiring your way. See, I can say you a lot of times. So you need to kind of take that first step. Here's a great opportunity. It's a 15 minute retirement checkup call. You can talk about any questions you have about retirement or what's on your mind. There's a website on your screen right now. It's MerkelRetire.com. You can schedule your 15-minute checkup call today. So we've been talking about the book. We'll tell you how you can get a copy next. Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way, and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement, take action and retire your way. This is Retire and Today. I'm here with Haley Gutchen Ryder and Lauren Merkel, and I'm just looking through Lauren's new book, Retire Your Way, to see which chapter focuses on Social Security. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Chapter five, Social Security. 
you get a lot of questions about it because it's a really big decision for people as they head to retirement. Which is why it's a really big chapter in the book and it has a big presence within the overall book because Social Security can represent anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of many people's retirement income and for all of those of you who don't have a pension, Social Security acts just like a pension and so, so it's a permanent income that you're going to receive for as long as you're alive. It's a big deal. There's a lot of options when it comes to electing Social Security and there's so much misunderstanding when it comes to Social Security elections. So that's why we go into it deep in the book. Well, and speaking of retire your way, retiring your way, Haley, can be helping people maximize this benefit. You've seen it time and time again. Hey, let's do an analysis, and you can definitely put more money in people's pockets when you do an analysis sometimes. There's so many options when it comes to Social Security, and not just the 81 options that you have when you're a married couple, but there's survivorship options, widow benefits, ex-spousal benefits. So yes, it is important conversation to analyze and my aunt in particular, I helped her, and it, there's so much information out there that you just don't know, but with my aunt, she had no idea that she was entitled to an ex-spousal benefit based on her ex-spouse's benefit record. And so because of that, because we walked through it together, she was able to maximize an extra $1,000 of her Social Security income in retirement. Yeah, and part of the confusion is spousal survivorship. They both start with us. They sound very similar. A lot of people interchange those terms, and they are completely different mm -hmm. in the eligibility for spousal and survivorship, or especially with the spousal change in 2016. So the spousal rules are so much different in today's landscape than what they ever have been before. That leads to confusion. And that's, that's one more reason why we have to do the appropriate Social Security analysis for every single person looking to go to retirement and make that determination. And we have to take into consideration Social Security with all of the other income resources, whether you do have a pension or your investable assets or any other income resources that you do have. And I want to go back to your aunt for a minute because I don't want to slide through that. That was an extra $1,000 a month, not $1,000 a year. Not, I mean, $1,000 a month for the rest of her life. Very, very powerful. Also, I want to hear you say social security and pension, something I know you guys uh, hear a lot of times when you when you sit down with pre-retirees and retirees is that, well, my coworker did this, mm -hmm. or my sister elected Social Security here, and that just is not a complete picture when you do what your coworker or, or spouse, or excuse me, family member does. Now, you can't just do what your friend does because it looks different. Everybody's retirement plan looks different. There's different income pieces to their income plan, or maybe they have different legacy ambitions. It all looks different, so you can't make that decision based on what your neighbor does or what your friend does, and you definitely can't just base that decision by just looking at Social Security alone. That decision has to be incorporated within your overall retirement plan because there's so many other factors that can weigh into when is the right time for you to elect your Social Security benefit. Um, I, have, I have worked with a family who is a blended family. They had kids from prior marriages. And so because of that, their legacy, some of their assets are going to go down to their kids. And so it was so important for them to maximize the survivorship benefit for their spouse for when they pass away. So those decisions are not siloed. You've got to look at your overall retirement plan and see what decision really does work best for you based on your goals. And Lauren, in the book, you go into detail on this, but let's talk about it just real briefly. Um, people sometimes think, well, there's a Social Security Administration for that. They'll help me make that decision. Yeah, and the Social Security Administration is wonderful and can provide a lot of information. And, and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll work in tandem with the Social Security Administration because what they can do is you give them a call and they can tell you, if you take your Social Security benefits at 65 and six months, here's what your benefit is gonna be really, really close. Uh, and that's not information that you necessarily get online or on your statements. So that is really helpful. What the Social Security Administration can't do is they can't look at what other assets you have. They can't look at the full complexity of your retirement plan. They can't create a tax plan for you. And all of those factors will influence what ultimately you do from a Social Security standpoint. So they're really good with the information they have, but they can't give you advice. And they shouldn't give you advice because they don't know that. They don't have information about your complete picture. Okay, so we promised to tell you how you could get a copy of Retire Your Way. This is a great resource. It's a website. Don't forget this website. It's on the screen. If you need to pause, write it down or go to your phone, keep it in the, you know, on your URL and then come back to the show. But it's retireyourwaytoolkit.com and here's what you're going to get. You'll get a copy of the book and then there's some guides in there. And this social security guide, I just got done reading this yesterday and I, I could pick out a lot of things uh, in the social security guide. But one thing that, that I think was really helpful is a lot of people that are listening right now might have heard Lauren say, 
Social Security is 30% of your income. And they're thinking, okay, that's a good start, but there's 70% I've got to come up with somehow. And this guide has got some really good, at least ideas to start thinking about how you'll come up with the rest of your retirement income. Yeah, this guide is really nice because it, it simply lays out the Social Security. And Social Security is very complex by nature. And there's so many other benefits to Social Security, like widow, spousal, ex-spousal. So this guide breaks down each benefit type and it clearly explains what this could look like. And for a lot of people, you just you don't know what you don't know. So by, re by getting this guide, by reading it, you can easily identify, at least easier, I should say. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> uh, you can easily identify maybe what option is best for you. But again, you're only looking at Social Security in that, in that context. It's important to also incorporate all of those things into your overall retirement plan. And there's some just power in the knowledge. You don't. You can look at this guide and feel more confused, and that, that's okay if that's what happens to you. Or you can look at this guide and feel empowered to maybe take the first steps towards retirement, or know that yeah, okay, Social Security is 30 percent, but there's other there's ways to come up with 70 percent more of the retirement income. And and it's it, it's supposed to help initiate that next step, which is to create a retirement plan because it is difficult to to really encapsulate what a retirement plan looks like for you and where to get started. So the guide provides a whole lot of information around Social Security and how to have Social Security work in tandem with your investable assets and how those might work together, not only at point of retirement, but over the course of your, your 20 to 25 year retirement, but it also gives you a starting point, a jumping off point. And that, that I think is the most important part. The Social Security Guide that's involved in the Retire Your Way Toolkit, as well as the Retire Your Way Book and all the other guides that are a part of that, what it's really intended to do is give you that jumping off point, but also help you gain more confidence in these decisions that you are going to have to make. You will have to make the decision on when to take your Social Security. If you're married, you're going to have to learn how to make the decision with you and your spouse and how your benefits work together over the course of your lifetime. All of those are decisions that have to be made. Confidence in those decisions is really empowering. And it, it's just a starting point. Social Security is just a starting point. You have all the other components as well. It's retireyourwaytoolkit.com. There are five guides plus the book. They'll talk about recession. There's an income checks list. Don't forget about taxes are on that too. Try to answer the question also, will your money last longer than you do? And there's also a guide on Social Security. We will continue talking about how to retire your way next. Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way Toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way, and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement. Take action and retire your way. retiring today. We almost stopped at the same time. I'm here with Lauren Merkel and Haley Gutchen Ryder and we're talking about Lauren's new book, Retire Your Way. We'll give you a little bit more on how to get a copy of it here in just a moment. But Lauren, one of the chapters in the book is devoted to one of the often underlooked aspects of retirement planning. Which is estate planning and one of the things we talk about when it comes to estate planning is everybody has an estate but not everybody has an estate plan. So in that book, retire your way. We talk about what an estate plan could look like, some of the legal documents that you might want to consider, whether it's a will or a trust or the power of attorneys and how all of those would play a role within your overall estate plan. It's one of the most overlooked elements of a retirement plan because it's one of the most foreign topics. There's so many different legalities that, that are associated with those documents. How do you use them? What do you need? There's a lot of misnomers around these uh, those documents, whether what the will does, the trust does, and it's just daunting. And so, it, and, and nobody really likes to talk about dying or think about dying. No. But it is one of those things that's gonna happen to all of us and we would just wanna make sure that you are the most prepared when that in fact does happen. 
Yeah, and I know I've heard the retirement planners, both of you say, having a working together with a good estate planning attorney it is very crucial. But sometimes in, a, in early visits, before you get to the, the attorney piece, hey, Lee, you find yourself having to answer some basic questions about uh, a will and a trust. Yeah, when we sit down with our families to talk about legacy ambitions, often they ask us questions about a will and a trust. And one of the most common questions that we receive is, should I have a will or should I have a trust? And the real question really is, is should I have a trust that works in tandem with a will? And the reason why is because a will is that basic estate planning document that can instruct who's the guardians of your kids, it can say where your assets go to, um, but the important distinction with a will is that the way it operates is very different than a trust. So with a will, when you pass away, this goes through probate. And what probate is, is it's the court's way of validating the will, appointing the executor, and distributing the assets and settling the estate. Now, probate is a public process. So if for any reason you have unequal shares going down to your heirs or maybe an ex-spouse and you don't want them to know what is going to take place with your assets when you're gone, well, probate's a public process, so that won't get it done. This is very public and it could be contested through probate. The other large disadvantage of probate is that it can be very costly. It can cost on average anywhere between two to 3% of the entire estate. So when the will goes through probate, initially it could cost you less to set up on the front end, but for your heirs on the back end, it could cost them more. Now the difference with a trust is that a trust is another legal document that does instruct how and when you want your assets to get to your beneficiaries. But the biggest difference is that it avoids probate, which means it remains private. And on top of that, that two to 3% of the estate, does not, that, those costs do not get applied when it goes through a trust. So when you're trying to identify whether or not you need a trust with your overall estate planning, the real question is, is do you want more control or do you want to avoid probate? Yeah, I think uh, almost everybody needs to have a will. And the question is, is do you want to have a trust in addition to the will? And yep. there's a lot of benefits, as you pointed out, to incorporating a trust within your overall estate plan. But probate avoidance is one of those biggest pieces that not a lot of people are aware of. A lot of people say, I, I have a will, I'm good. Well, you might be good, but can you be better with the incorporation of a trust? And the answer to that question is different for everybody. Some people need to have a trust to help avoid the probate and the two to 3% extra costs. Mm -hmm. And some people really love to have the privacy that comes along with the assets transferring through the trust as opposed to probate. And, and other people, a, a simple will does work really well to accomplish everything that you're trying to accomplish. So it's, it's different for everybody. And the process that you guys use, uh, the retirement planners use, kind of forces people to start thinking about these things. Because I'm even thinking about the lifestyle thing. Yes, we know that some people come in right away, they've got that lifestyle piece figured out. Maybe they've never thought about it before, but you guys are at least having the conversation. Hey, have you thought about your lifestyle? Oh, that's something we need to go back and think about. Estate planning, same way. You know, Nobody's really going, hey, what are we going to do on our last day? But your process, because you've done it so many times and, and you've got it you know, worked out so well, it really makes people do this. It, it makes people think. One of the, when, when somebody joins our firm where we start working on a retirement plan, one of the first things we do is we talk about their beneficiaries. And when we fill out that paperwork to set up the accounts, that's what takes most of the time is where do you want these assets to go when you both pass or when you pass? There's a lot of blended families today that we work with, and there's, so there's a lot of conversation that, that is necessary in a blended family situation, in an individual situation, as well as a, a traditional married couple as well, uh, making sure that you have wishes, then your wishes are fulfilled. And I'm glad, Molly, you brought up the, the fact of having an, an estate planning attorney on your team. We do work with estate planning attorneys, just like we work with CPAs. We don't write the tr uh, trust, we don't write the wills. You need to have an attorney do that kind of legal work for you but we do have a lot of conversations around what you should incorporate within your overall plan, and then we can even refer you to an estate planning attorney if you don't have an attorney that you work with already. And these conversations are so important too because a lot of times people don't necessarily realize what the true you know, diagram is when they just only list beneficiaries. A lot of times when we do meet with these blended families and they're talking about how they want their beneficiaries listed, what they don't realize is that sometimes they can end up cutting out the other 
spouse's children because of how they listed the beneficiary. So these are conversations that we walk through with our families. We say, if you were to pass away, this is what would happen to your assets. And if they, at that point, change anything at that point in time, it could look very different from your original wishes. So we make sure to have those tougher conversations, let's say, but it's so important to have so that way you make sure that your legacy is fulfilled in the way that you want it to. The guides that come with the toolkit, Retire Your Way toolkit, those will start a lot of conversations because uh, when we talk about social security, definitely start that conversation. And then we haven't even touched in this episode on taxes, but there's a whole guide that really does a nice job, Lauren, of, of laying out how don't, A, don't forget about taxes and retirement, and also you can put more money in your pocket with a long-term tax plan. The number one wealth eroding factor when it comes to retirement planning is, in fact, taxes. It's not the markets. It's not the erosion of portfolios when we go through recessions. It is your retirement tax bill. Just as a, as a general rule, if you have a million dollars in a 401k or IRA you've never paid taxes on before, over the course of your 20 to 25 year retirement, you could pay in excess of $500,000 just in taxes alone. And so your tax plan is all about how do you decrease that retirement tax bill, which puts more spendable income in your pocket to help you live that lifestyle that you've been thinking about. Here's the website one more time, retireyourwaytoolkit.com. You'll go there and there will be five guides and you can get a copy of Lauren's book, Retire Your Way. We'll continue talking about how to retire your way on this show. It's retiring today, and we thank you for watching. Do I have enough saved for retirement? When should I take Social Security? Which Medicare option is best? How do I plan for inflation? Sometimes the road to retirement starts with more questions than answers. We're here to help. Join us for our upcoming Journey to Retirement workshop. Get answers and start your retirement journey with confidence. Our online workshop includes information on Secure Act 2.0 and changing retirement rules. Visit retirewithmerkel.com to register for an upcoming workshop. Your retirement journey starts now. Thank you.